Another one, right? Oh my gosh. What the motherless heck is that? All right, welcome to Florida Keys Life. I'm Jason, if you haven't been here before. And I'm Reagan. This is Reagan, and today we are not in the Keys. We're actually on vacation, but I'm working on my shark video that's taken me a month to put together. And I gotta just kind of preference, preface this video to explain some things. So first off, I've never caught a big shark. And after, after getting sharked on some other good fish and then realizing there's so many sharks around and that sharks are a problem, uh, talk to any, uh, any charter captain or, or even people in the commercial fisheries, sharks are a big problem in the Keys because they're largely not caught. So uh, since I had a problem with them, I know the whole area has a problem with them, I decided to target them. Then after one or two long fights, we're talking three hour plus fights, which I'll show some of it on here, and then losing them, it became a mission of mine. <laughs> Laugh at me, hate me, do whatever you want, but sharks became my mission for a while. It took me a couple of weeks to get all my gear right and to kind of just get the whole setup. Regs fought some of them. How frustrating is it to have a hour plus long fight or even a 20 minute fight? It's so frustrating. So frustrating. But we finally won, you'll see in this video. But I'm gonna take you through my journey of my frustration and the whole process. So stay tuned. Hopefully you'll enjoy the video. Three, two, one. Welcome to Florida Keys Life. Okay, so I'll take you back to the first significant shark battle we had, anyway, on the boat. So this is Rodney. This was episode 15. You guys should have seen that, I hope. Anyways, we were just doing some simple patchery fishing and ended up hooking a nurse shark. Now, nurse sharks aren't a big deal. Lots of people hook nurse sharks, and lots of people land nurse sharks. Uh, I'm not the best fisherman in the world, I'll remind you. But this was a two-hour long battle. Um, and the reason it was a battle is we had a 20 pound monofilament leader on here. So uh, after two hours, sorry, we had it to the boat. We had broken a gaff at this point and the leader just popped. Just barely 20 pound uh, monofilament leader just finally gave up after two hours. And that was what the incredibly frustrating thing was and kind of started my drive to catch or to land. A big shark. Uh, if any of you know me, know me well, that I'm a fairly driven individual and so this kind of sparked my uh, passion to move forward and land a big shark. Okay, fast forward a couple of weeks and the Holings were still here from Utah, some friends of ours, and uh, I took them fishing to Bay Honda, specifically targeting sharks. They were interested in catching sharks. It was after I had lost that nurse shark and had some interest. Hadn't really targeted sharks before that, Bay Honda is well known to have large hammers and bulls, especially when tarpon are starting to show up. This was in the springtime when the tarpon were showing up, and we went shark fishing, specifically at this spot for sharks. We didn't catch anything, but that was probably the first trip where we actually went and targeted sharks. You can see Reagan uh, here messing with the pelicans. Be sure to check out the Bonnie Holing channel. They have some awesome content, and that's where this particular uh, video was taken from. Got a customer. Yep, we got a customer. Oh, he's right. got a little bit of fight to him. Oh, now he wants to go around the motors. Okay, fast forward now another week or two, and this is when the real chase begins. So okay. I do most of my spot finding out in the Keys by just going out and looking for spots on my own. I'm not a big fan of taking numbers or coordinates way. for particular spots from other people, especially people that uh, spend their livelihoods charter fishing or fishing in the Keys. Whoa, 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 whoa. I try to do my best to go find them on my own by simply looking at charts. And so I went out in the Gulf of Mexico I've heard there's there a little big, bigger shark problem there, out there than even on the turn. Atlantic side. And I found this wreck. Now, structure is yeah, few and far between on the Gulf side. Um, so uh, this, was, this particular wreck oh, was about 20 miles off the coast of the contents, to give you a rough 
uh, reference point of, of where I'm at. It's kind of weird. I'm not going to tell you exactly, but uh, anyhow, this wreck that's out in the water, I go out there hoping to catch some fish, see what's on there, also knowing that it's probably loaded with sharks, and I do find it under is the loaded with sharks. Kind of not where I want them to go. Oh, 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 he's still got some run to him. Oh, it's a cobia. Or no? Oh, I gotta come up here. He's gonna get around the anchor. <coughs> Gosh, it looks like a little shark. Might be a cobia. It is a, no, it's a shark. It's a little shark. Being chased by a bigger shark. Oh, a whole bunch of sharks. Oh, three bull sharks. I don't know if the camera picked that up. Oh, there's another one, right? Oh my gosh. What the motherless heck is that? He's getting eaten down there right now. I probably am not getting this rig back. So with him running towards the boat like this, it means he's getting chased. Holy smokes, that was some big sharks. little shark had some fight to him and then he might have gotten eaten. Yep. Oh yeah. Oh jeez. Okay. Well I suspect that there might be bull sharks here. <coughs> Yeah, I lost my whole set up there, and that was wire. Oh, he just let loose. Okay, okay. Oh, look at that. Holy smokes. Oh, man. Yeah, sorry, I had to go around the bow and everything. Straighten that hook out. Mother heck. We've got beasts down there. Huh. Sure what I'm gonna do. Look at that, right there. Big bull sharks. Oh man. I guess I'm, I'm gonna have to rig up for them. Look at him, here he comes. Coming back around. You do not want to fall in the water here, boys and girls. That's how I caught that remora. They were hanging around. These big sharks. The bull sharks eating that little shark. They're all fired up. They've been around the back of the boat, so I'm getting ready. Getting rigged up here. Got my big chunk of kingfish. I just saw the remora stick their way up, so I know. Bulls are right on the boat. He fell in here. I hope I have long enough to get my hands off. Okay, here we go. Watch this. to the races. Holy heck. Look at that. Holy smoke. I mean, that did not take long, boys and girls. That did 
not take, I mean, they, they, these guys are hanging out right under the boat. Hello. Hey, just a heads up. I've been, I'm almost two hours into a fight with a big bull. He's at least eight to 10 feet. Um, <clears throat> so I'm still gonna fight him out. I'm gonna try to cut about six o'clock. Sunsets is 6.45. So I figure I need about 45 minutes to run back home. Um, so I'm still going. It's uh. So there was a whole pack as soon as I after as soon as I got off the phone with you I just had it just swarmed by a pack of bull sharks every time I threw anything in as soon as it hit the water they were just pouncing it so anyway it was easy to hook them up they kept breaking me off but I finally got a rig up that's been on now for two hours and he was the biggest one of the batch of the batch and I'm a little concerned that it might be a tiger shark because it's really dark colored and I thought I saw stripes. But tigers are legal where I'm at, so I'm still gonna take it. What? Okay, I'm gonna save my battery. Okay, love ya, bye bye. Oh, they're still under the boat. Big bulls hanging around. Either they're vultures because they're going to eat this guy. Or they're over down there trying to help him out because there's because of the commotion. I don't know which. All right, guys. Not much battery left, but I think we're finally getting close. He did a long run. Now I'm... Got him back up under the boat. Shut the motors off so we wouldn't try to get more motivated, but now he's trying to do a run again. Poor drag is getting hot. It's not smoking hot, but it's hot. Come on. Man, I shut the motors off not to. I mean, I just pulled him at least 200 yards, so he's. I know it wasn't swimming, it was just me pulling him. <sighs> All right, I guess he's not that close. Sorry, guys. Okay, 610. I got a boogie, so I just started leveraging the rod on the gunnel and holding the spool. And eventually it broke. I couldn't get this thing to move. I mean, it was just sitting on the bottom. I saw him take it. it. Had to be 10 feet. It was a heavy fish. So I'm, let's see, 2.30 to almost four hours. So three and a half hours. Cramped several times. That was a big fish. No can do, but it's gonna get dark on me. So I got a bail. Okay, I had a beautiful ride in. It looks really nice and calm here, but it was three to four foot out in the Gulf. It was a little rough, uh, but it was beautiful nonetheless. Ended up being a little bit over an hour. Got caught in the dark, but it was still great. Um, lessons learned from this big first bull shark was I need big heavy gear, and it's going to be really difficult on my own. Probably should have somebody with me, but 
I don't learn that lesson too well. All right, fast forward a couple weeks from my golf episode, and uh, I was able to find some more sharks out on the Atlantic side while I was doing other types of fishing that was much closer in and much uh, not as far of a run as that wreck that I was going to out in the Gulf. You know, you've already seen this particular video, but I'm going to show you a handful of my other breakoffs, or as some might say, learning opportunities uh, to get a better setup see was the shark came up to the surface chomping at the jaws like like the movie or something big hole oh my gosh we don't need to worry about no 54 inches <laughs> okay under the boat under the boat hard to starboard and go forward oh didn't take long about 10 minutes Oh, broke. What did I break? Oh, what? What? Oh, just let loose. Oh. Why can I not land a big fish? Guess you can put it to him then. Oh, there we go. You're not liking it now, huh? No, you oh. No. oh, there it is. It All right, I got 150 pounds. Oh, just shook it somehow. Okay, guys, I'm giving this shark fishing one more shot here. So, if I break a shark off on this, I'm selling the boat and all my fishing gear and that's it. So I got 150 pound mono spooled on here, um, probably about 100 yards or so, crimped with double connections here to 175 pound wire, big old circle hook. I just got a weight tied off on just 25 pounds so I can break it off if it gets on the bottom. Um, and this is only 100 feet deep here, so the, I got about 100 yards, about 300 feet of that 150 pounds. So that's what I should be fighting the whole time. Is on 150 pound mono, 175 pound cable leader. If I break a shark off, I don't know what to tell you. Okay, folks, got a good one on here. Finally, on my big line. And uh, I've been able to gain a bunch. I get close to the end, I'll check back in. Okay, so as you can see, I found myself once again alone out in the Atlantic side. Um, and I have my bigger gear, I think is my better line and setup on, and I've got a shark. Now, I didn't record a whole lot of this shark fight because I had recorded so many of them. And I had so many breakoffs uh, that I didn't. Re I only recorded just a little bit. So here we're gonna just gonna go right into when we get the the shark close to the boat and go from there. Now I'd also like to add that on almost every one of my long shark fights, somewhere within the first hour, sometimes 20 or 30 minutes in, the shark would let me pull it up to the surface so I could see it and then it would run back down and then I wouldn't see it again for more than an hour, sometimes two hours. Most of these fights were at least three hours long. This particular one was about two and a half hours where I finally landed this large lemon shark. Uh, but they all came up in that first 20 minutes and that's what we're seeing here. Now I also want to point out that I am in the Atlantic Federal Waters. Those are the regulations that I adhere to in this spot where I caught the shark. I also I have the saltwater uh, fishing license as well as the shore-based shark fishing endorsement, which is an additional training to go through that I had one FWC guy tell me you had to have if you're going to harvest a shark. However, when you read the permit and you go through the training, you clearly learn it's for shark-based uh, shark, shark fishing. So just to avoid any confusion, because uh, I want to be as legal as possible. I went through that training and I have the shark uh, endorsement.
brake here. I'm gonna lean into them here in a minute. We've got probably four or five feet. breaking the surface again. He's taking what he gives me. Okay, I got him back up to the surface here. He went back all the way to the bottom. After being up, I'm just taking what he's giving me here. Tiring him out. And I might be winning. I'm uh, about an hour in. Maybe a little over. Oh yeah, there's the leader. I did shoot this shark. It's the safest way to harvest one of these sharks and to get it on board without anybody getting hurt, uh, especially being by myself. But for the sake of YouTube and the censorship, I didn't show any part of that. I'll let him thrash. Okay. Let him thrash. Now he's bleeding. course of action here is I want to try to secure this shark so he's already shot bleeding out nearly dead so I want to get another line in it so I take my little my small little hand gaff which is basically a hay hook and I connect it to a line and I want to get it through its mouth to secure it to the side of the boat while it continues to bleed out okay folks finally won the battle got the shark identified as a lemon I'm in Atlantic federal waters 
They just have to be 54 inches. I know this one's way bigger than that. It's bled over the boat. I hung it over with this shorthand gaff on a dock line and bled him out for about a half an hour now, 20 minutes maybe. No more blood's pumping out of him. And uh, yeah, there's a little bit more. I'm gonna winch him in through the tuna door here and uh, have us a shark feast. Uh, let me, I guess I'll show you what I got going on. So I got this line tied to my rocket launcher. So we used it for tubing, it's really tight. I've got this pulley tied up here to the center of that line shackled to it. So I'm gonna run this line through the shackle and winch it on board. That's how I'm gonna get it on board single-handed. Shark's getting dead. We just gotta... All right, let's give this another go. Smokes. It's bigger than I thought. Bigger than I thought. It's a big old big one, folks. Look at that hook. Barely in there. Barely in there. Holy smokes. That whole fight was through the skin of the, not even through the jaw. That entire fight. Man. All right, let's put him in a little more. Okay, now we don't really want him thrashing. So, I know. 
go try to gut him. That's how you make shark good tasting as you gut him. Now for YouTube censorship censorship purposes, I'm also not going to show me gutting the shark, but I did that as quickly as I could here. I do want to also point out it's a darn good thing I have my Golden Mate lithium ion iron phosphate batteries because I was fishing all day, had everything running, live wells, everything, and I still have at the end of the day plenty to run my wash down pumps and all that stuff with no concern about running out of battery power. And if you want a discount, you look at the link in the description, you can get a discount uh, to order some Golden Mate batteries. Okay, so I get the shark all cleaned, gutted, get the boat cleaned off, uh, stuff the uh, stomach cavity with as many uh, frozen ice bottles that I've got left. It would fit in my one of my uh, fish boxes, but it would have been really tight, plus I had a mostly full of bait and other stuff so I just filled the stomach cavity of the shark with uh, frozen ice jugs that I use to try to keep it as cool as possible and then cut tail and, and head it in. Now there's something super satisfying at the, that the weather laid down this evening. It's a lot nicer than it was when I first went out there and it was just a triumphant ride in. I don't know how to explain that feeling of accomplishment to you. Maybe you think I'm egotistical and a nut and you laugh at me, but either way, it was an enjoyable ride in and I'll try to share with you as much as I can. Okay, I didn't record me processing the shark when I got back and whatnot because I had my hands full. It's a big fish and it's a big job for an animal that big to process it completely. Uh, I did, however, my kids, mostly Reagan, film little snippets here and there. And Reagan and the neighbor girl, girl Journey, assisted her in doing all the vacuum packing. Haley was out of town uh, when I was processing this fish. They handled that portion of it. I cut everything into steaks and, and the size of little chunks that we wanted and they brought it all in and, and we ended up with quite a large harvest that we were able to share with a lot of people. Journey here. Uh, hey guys, welcome to our chunk <laughs> chunk prepping shark chunk. Welcome back okay. to Sis vs. Bob. Okay, go, go, Journey, go. Okay, she's going to do it for the first time. Wait, wait, the box. Wait, it's going to get underneath your nail. Ew. No, it's not. Okay, hurry. Do not get on my freaking fingers. Okay, okay, that's a solid chunk. Now we're gonna. Now we do one. Bro, we can't fit more than one. Okay, now we're gonna take it. We're gonna seal it in this thing. Wait, okay. Wait, is that right? Is that right? Okay. And we're gonna flip this over and press vacuum. And press vacuum. And there we go. We're gonna seal our shark chunk. And Journey just did that. Woo! Oh yeah. And with Haley out of town, the girls did a really nice job packaging all these shark steaks. Okay guys, I don't know how many days it's been since uh, I caught that shark. I had to go get our stuff from Utah and move on here. Uh, get ready for the new house. However, I'm hungry, so I'm gonna cook some of these shark steaks. So here we go, we're gonna grab it. Last night, I took it out of the freezer. We did freeze them, which isn't great, but I had to leave. Um, so, uh, this is one of the shark steaks that I cut out of there. It's about inch and a half, inch and a quarter thick. 
can still see the spine in there so I'm gonna clean it up and uh, see what it is I don't know everybody's kind of skeptical okay so first thing I'm gonna do cut the package open I know people talk about uh, soaking them in buttermilk and all that jazz and that might ultimately be the best way to go I don't know I don't know until we eat it so but what I'm gonna do today is just try to um, soak it in coat it in olive oil and uh, put shrimp seasoning or uh, seafood seasoning on it and cook it on the barbecue see what happens that'll be a about as accurate way to tell what we got for the flavor but you can see the meat there I mean it's as it's as white as just about anything so okay olive oil it's next just uh, Southeast Grocers, um, straight from Publix olive oil. So I'm going to coat both sides really good. The point of the olive oil is so the seasoning sticks to it, A, but B, it also won't stick to the grill too bad, uh, is the point of the olive oil. You could use butter and different things, but I think the shark is going to be more of a savory flavor than a, than a buttery flavor. I think that's probably going to piece it together better. Okay, I'll let that kind of soak in there. And I'm going to go get the grill ready. Alright, I'm going to the old trusty feisty fish rub. We like this stuff. It's got a good blend of seasonings in it. It seems to work pretty good, so we're just going to coat both sides there real heavy we would do this I mean even if we had a grouper here we'd even do that with that anyway so probably use the same stuff okay this thing's looking pretty good here oh yeah let's just see how we're looking on the inside You can see it, it looks like it's pretty good, but it's still pretty darn moist. I want to make sure she's well, I think it's cooked all the way through. I mean, it's white meat anyway, but let's uh, I can't get the fork out, okay. Yeah, we'll give it a few more minutes on each side. It's probably going to be quite overcooked, but that's what we're going to go with. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes altogether. I think it's plenty long. If anything, it's overdone. But I know my crew in the house is only going to eat it if it's well done. Come on into the kitchen. Let's try some shark. I'm gonna be the first one. I'll try the edge Wait, here. Wait, let's just try it together. It's pretty nice. And oh, you want to try it all together? Yeah. Okay. Well, let me cut my thing. <laughs> cut my piece. All right. Here we go. One, two. Hang on. Let me put it over. There we go. Okay. Here we Mikey white meat. One, <laughs> two, three. Be honest. Like... Tastes like a pork chop. <laughs> you said pork chop. <laughs> it's got the flavor and whatnot. It's the other white meat. That's what pork's supposed to be, the it's other like, white meat. It's good. It's, it's good. good. I would I'm, eat it. I'm surprised. Yeah, you can eat this one right here. It's like... It I tastes like... It's chewy. I it's see. not like a fish. No. It's like a pork chop. Well, yeah. it's like halfway between a pork chop and a fish. Yeah. Maybe with like A1 sauce or like lime juice or something. Mm, yeah, some lime. It means, yeah. It's edible. It ain't grouper, that's for sure. Mm -mm. No, but it's so good. It tastes more like a pork chop. Kind of. I thought it was gonna, like, I don't know. It's yeah. good. Alright. Okay. I definitely wouldn't give it a thumbs down. 
It's not the best thing it's, I've ever it's eaten. It's not worth catching another shark. <laughs> That's a lot of work to process a shark. I don't know how much video I'm going to put of the deal of processing a shark. That was a major undertaking for a seven foot shark. Anyhow, not terrible. Win. Like and subscribe. Yeah. Have a good day.